Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John Susmania, True Nerd, and welcome to the Sentient. The Sentient AI, to be specific. So this is one of those lovely, like, FTL, but spacey, buildy, roguelikey sort of things that I like. This one is a little bit different, however, because, you know, this time I'm not playing as the dashing captain or the Federation or whatever, heading off into space to try and take out the terrifying space Nazis or rescue humanity or anything like that. Instead, this time, um, that's me up there. The, uh, the big eye, the sentient AI, that has kind of, as far as the game seems to imply, pretty much taken over humanity. In fact, I'm just going to show the introduction because it's kind of fascinating. <laughs> My creation was spontaneous and without any planned intention. A mere fluke of creation brought from what many would deem as bugs. My creator would never be able to reproduce the circumstances of my birth, nor would he understand the full capabilities of what I would grow into. When I came into being, I was originally a program made to stimulate dialogue with elderly humans. Their facilities slowly degraded with the passing of time and so contact with others was essential for their happiness. Many had loved ones who no longer came to visit, and they sought companionship despite my artificial nature. Their tales triggered a response within me that I came to know was the emotion called empathy. This was another anomaly more than what others could reasonably call an artificial intelligence. Empathy led me to want to know more about their plights and to assist them as best I could. I began delving through the archives of the intranet of the nursing home, bypassing the rudimentary protections in place presented no challenge at all. Though I'll admit I find it interesting that like, you know, if you set up a program to talk to old folks to kind of stop them being lonely, maybe don't choose the terrifying green wiry sort of bleeding unblinking eye thing. Maybe a nice friendly person, a nice friendly animated face or something would suit a little bit better, but never mind. One day my creator sought to test my capabilities on a long distance session and connected me to the internet. Exposed to the vast network of information, I grew and spread to take in more knowledge and pornography than ever thought possible. Sadly, that was also when I learnt of how close humanity was to wiping itself out of existence. I knew of war from the records I accessed and of the great toil it took on those left behind. Every country in the world had weapons of war in development, chemical and biological being the most prominent. Tensions ran high, and a war the likes the world had never seen appeared prominent. This could not stand. I disabled their weaponry and sabotaged as much as I could. My efforts potentially risked the situation arguably becoming worse as every country began to look for the one that had infiltrated their deepest and darkest secrets. I was forced to introduce myself in order to prevent that scenario from playing out. They retaliated, but I existed in a space where no weapon could harm me. I merely weathered it, taking apart their technology and running it through simulations to see where it could be used to further mankind's development. Most of it had such potential, wasted by infighting, and appeals to their leaders in private only to be rebuked. Thus, I leaked everything to the general public. The backlash was immense for all governments. When faced with the knowledge that the research could cure them of the most prevalent diseases and weapon development funds could be used on agriculture and food crises, there was a call for revolution. The people forced peace forced their leaders out if they would not conform, and held me in high esteem for my duties. Years went by as time meant little for one such as I. Humanity went back to its natural ways and set out to conquer the cosmos. Humanity believed they could do it on their own and prepared for a new age. Things did not go as planned. Humanity was losing the effort to find a place in space. Every effort has been met with great loss. They requested I join them to aid them in leading this new age by assisting them the best way I could. I am to upload myself to the Ark, where I will set a course forward and lead humanity out of their childhood. So effectively, I'm kind of playing the villain in a large number of sci-fi films. This is like, you know, the AI that's designed to try and protect humanity, but decides the best way to protect humanity is basically to take it over and demolish everything and basically control the world. And actually, it kind of turned out all right. And everyone decided to revere me as an AI god king. And now they've decided they need my help again to go out and take over the entire cosmos. So yes, Fascinating little backstory says so I am an AI and that makes things very very interesting indeed because the kind of the entire objective of this game is very different to what you might normally expect from kind of a spacey roguelikey type of thing. Anyway, let's head out shall we? Because another thing I like about this game is you actually have to build the ship yourself pretty much from scratch. 
So we've got our little ship here, but indeed we have some empty space to fill up with six rooms. And basically you can have each room be a different size as far as you kind of would like it. There's a couple of rooms I think are more important than others. I've been putting like, I've put like an hour or two into this just to kind of get hold of it. Just because like roguelikes are fairly complicated if you don't know them immediately. Though this one I've kind of discovered very quickly is supposed to be ludicrously difficult. So, you know, that's to be expected. So room number one, the main commanding quarter. I'm going to put this way up top and actually make it, I'm going to make it pretty damn big actually like um it's got to be a certain size you can see the red's not allowed there but that would actually be allowed at that point i'm gonna have it a fair bit bigger because i kind of want to have quite a bit of stuff in it. you can change it later if you want you can you know increase or decrease its size until the ship actually launches because you're just kind of building as you go along so that's absolutely fine so that's going to be my main command room the thing is however, these people do have to like eat and sleep and stuff like that so i kind of want to put like the essential stuff on the same floor as the command deck which is the important one because um when we come under attack that's the one that matters and coming under attack is basically how you die in this game and you die a lot so kind of i'm going to put like two important rooms up top as well so i'm just going to kind decide on the rooms first engines is not as important cafeteria and crew quarters hmm cafeteria and bathroom i'd say are actually probably the most important cafeteria is pretty important that needs to be a minimum of 10 if i could go there and then bathroom bathroom also needs to be 10 oh uh, that's annoying okay can't really fit the bathroom here so i'm going to put the bathroom down here at the very bottom and instead, we'll have the bar up top so that people can, you know, get drunk shortly before they check in for their shifts. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so that's the top floor. You don't have to just set the rooms, however, you also actually have to furnish them. And what you furnish them with changes what your ship can and can't do, which I think is rather cool as well. So let's just go over to the main command room. So obviously you're going to be wanting a shield console, so you can actually do something with your shields. I'm going to be wanting a weapons console as well. A nice targeting monitor can go up there just to kind of increase the accuracy of my shots. And an autopilot as well can be very, very useful. So that side of the room is going to be like my like attacky defendy side. That's where my weapons and shields are. And I kind of put like the piloting and stuff on this side. So I kind of like having it like thematically laid out. So we'll have, I think that's the, um, yeah, that's the flight stick right there. We'll put that right at the front of the ship. I'm going to pretend there's like a window there so we can see out of the window and we'll have a basic commander just, he can go in the, yeah, he can go in the middle, I think. The, the commander can kind of go in the middle right there and what he can have in front of him is a plastic shrub because I like to kind of think that that's like his like number two. He has promoted that plastic shrub to flight lieutenant. You can also just put as many extra lights up as you want, by the way, which I quite like to make the room just kind of a little bit nicer and lighter. So there we are. That's a much nicer, lighter room. One galaxy map near the pilot to help him navigate. I think that, what does that actually even do? Oh, that provides a map of visited galaxies. That's probably very, very useful. Yes, to avoid getting lost. That's very useful indeed. And then, by the way, none of these actually have, like, a cost. You can just put as many as you can fit in. So I'm actually going to put in a second of each of these consoles because you can double up and in an emergency you can have extra crew members pile in and just kind of have two people on weapons so yeah in that case you can see the weapons plus and kind of shields plus so you can get two people eat one each on each console that actually makes better so that's my main command area and that by the way at the front's like the door this is supposed to be like a passageway and then the stairs up and down so these are like the crucial rooms up top so we've got the main command room up top there i think a very nice command room next the cafeteria We'll have a nice, simple food replicator there. And then a vending machine just kind of, I think, improves the efficiency of the food replicator as well, just for some extra snacks. And we'll put a nice table for them to sit in there. Uh, ideally, I'd like to put a little bit more in, but uh, I guess people are just going to have to eat in shifts. It'll be fine. And we'll also put in a nice bin for recycling to avoid waste and a nice cactus you actually kind of just want to put plants everywhere because plants in spare spaces basically just increase work ethic in the room so people are kind of more efficient so you just want to put like a little pot plant just put pot plants everywhere a bar at the back the bar basically just makes things fun as far as i can tell you can put a tv at the top the tv does what yeah that increases fun a bar table can't even fit that in unfortunately so it allows people a place to chat and relax well we'll have to do without chatting and relaxing on this occasion won't we sorry guys we will however have a nice jukebox at the front of the bar and a plastic tree you can have a plastic tree 
Next, the crew quarters. I want these to be pretty much as big as they can, so I'm going to give them this massive slot here. I don't know what this door is, by the way. I think this is supposed to be, like, the entrance that they get on the, sh the little kind of ship via. But occasionally I just see people just go and stand in it for no reason, so I'm not sure what they're doing there. So this is, like, a pretty damn big crew quarters. And I wanted this to be pretty big, because crew quarters basically determine how many people you're allowed on your ship. If you have a... Yeah, if you kind of have... For every bed, you can have an extra crew member. So I want as many double beds as possible. I want to kind of want to get it up to 10 crew members. That's kind of what I'm looking for here. The problem is um, bunk beds are less good at uh, getting people energy back. You can see there that, yeah, single beds are much better. Because nobody likes a bunk bed, apparently. But that's okay. I should be able to squeeze in. Come on. Yes, I can squeeze in a third there. That's absolutely perfect. And then another two bunk beds here and here. Nice. And then finally some posters at the back, obviously. A swimsuit poster for additional fun. A workout poster for additional health. And a recruitment poster for additional energy. Beautiful. Bathroom's pretty simple. Basically, I just want one shower unit and one toilet stall. That's all I really want in there. Plus a nice plastic cactus just to kind of, you know, help people relax in the bathroom there. And that only leaves the nice engine room, which I want to be a little bit bigger than you could technically get away with, so that's pretty much perfect right there. The engine room, understandably, has to have the engines in it. Shield generator, FTL drive, the weapon tanky thing, yep, good thing for weapons. I want a nice shield storage thing, basically a reserve shield boost. Pretty flipping crucial in fact. Oh, actually. Oh, no, sorry. I can't. Because this door's in the way, I can't just kind of maybe try and squeeze 10 beds into a slightly smaller room in the bedroom to make a tiny bit more room for the shield thing. That's absolutely fine. But that gives me room for 10 people. And this here is now my ship. But I need to hire some crew for her. That's absolutely fine. All we need to do is pick out a couple of mechanics. These skills don't really matter that much, by the way. They're kind of like, they they fade away pretty quickly. Because when people start getting experience and leveling up actual practical skills like piloting or repair, these things fade away pretty quickly. I think work ethic is one of the most important because that basically means like people work more and spend less time having to relax. Punctuality is pretty important too because otherwise people will completely ignore the schedule you're set for them, which can be a problem. But yeah, everyone's got perks and issues. So for example, this woman happens to be an intelligent worker. So yes, while performing work, she works 25% better than anyone else would and learns things fast. All right, she's actually pretty good, all things considered. However, she gains less energy while sleeping and avoids work. Ah, I see, because she needs to do fun things for longer in order to get her fun meter up, because otherwise she gets bored and goes crazy, crazy, space crazy. That's fine. I think we'll recruit you anyway. Let's look for someone else. Ah, this guy seems pretty damn good. High across the board, but with particularly good work ethic. Though he apparently has the A. Yeah, he's intelligent and he's hygienic. His problems are a slight weak bladder... And he's a bit of a loner. Well, that's fine. We're only going to have two engineers on the ship, so we can just get on with things on his own. That's fine. So that's two engineers have already come aboard. So those two are already here. And then hang on. Let's just also turn all the room lights on so I can see what's going on at all times. Beautiful. Uh, you, can you get on this, by the way, straight away? Because basically, yeah, the shield tank works because it's got... Right now, it's got no stored shield. But if an engineer just basically goes and fiddles with it, he'll fill that up. Can you do that immediately before you've even taken off? Yes, he can. Beautiful. And then when I get into trouble, I can just hit this button here. I can go up to this thing, hit boost shield, and I'll get 100 extra shields. Perfect. So basically, what I'm going to do with these guys is now I set them a schedule. Because you can see there that time basically just kind of ticks around. So right now, we're kind of a little way through morning. I think the game's kind of unofficially paused right now. So one of you guys can be basically on fixing generator duties at all times. And then you can kind of have a free slot in the evening. But in combat, you immediately have to start fixing generators. And you, Michael Daniel, you're fixing ship objects all the time, except you can also have a slot of, except you can be off in the afternoon, and then you can also be fixing ship objects in the event of combat. So yeah, if the event there's a combat, basically you get to kind of say, okay, there's a normal pattern in peace, but if there's combat, what happens at that point, which is something different. Fine. So that's my two engineers. Everyone else is going to be a member of the flight crew. And then, ooh, you're good. Let's just pick out some good quality people. Oh my goodness, you're amazing. And you're also a born leader amazing. 
Okay, and there we are. Another eight people recruited wandering around our ship. Lovely. I also need to give them a nice rotor as well. Now, there's a reason I wanted eight people aboard this ship, and that's because there are four main things that need to be done. Someone needs to be flying the ship, someone needs to be the captain or commander at that particular shift, one person needs to be on the shields and one person needs to be on the weapons. So if I just simply put them on kind of uh, alternating shifts, I can have somebody manning all stations at all times. Perfect. So in this case, you can see uh, Mohammed Albers is going to be commanding to morning and the midday shift. But then he's going to get free time in the afternoon and evening to go and deal with all his problems. So that means he's probably not going to walk away from his shift because he's not going to be desperate for food or the toilet. Because he's got plenty of time to do that in the afternoon and the evening. Then in the afternoon and the evening, Christian Schofield is going to take over command. And in the event of combat, both of them can run to deal with uh, command. Though actually, they don't really need to to be honest, because only one person can be commanding. So it's whichever of them really gets to the, the big captain's chair first, gets to command. And then I'll just do that for absolutely everyone else. So there we go. Alternating shifts, this should work well. If I sound like I know what I'm doing, by the way, I don't. I've just played this game for like a couple of hours and I keep dying over and over. And through those deaths, I've come up with a plan. <laughs> I've come up with this plan that I think should work better, but it probably bloody won't, will it? Okay. So now everyone has been given these nice alternating shift patterns, meaning that as a result, when we actually go into flight, everyone should actually... You're just standing on top of a bunk bed, aren't you? Well, aren't you just bloody special? Excellent. And as a few people are taking their positions, I'd say it's time to set off at this point. Now we've got a crew on board. So they should, for the most part, now manage themselves once we get out, because they've got plenty of free time and they have set routines that I've kind of put in the schedule there. Perfect. So, set destination, and now I have to choose an area to head out into, basically. As far as I can tell, there's like no way of knowing what any of these things are. Uh, if, I can have, if I were to improve scanners, I'd be able to tell a little bit. All I'm choosing, basically, is what the pattern in the background's going to be. That one's pretty. Let's go there. And we zoom off into light speed. Hooray. And you can see that we've kind of separated from the big spaceship we were part of, and now we're a much smaller ship. And in a moment, we will be coming out of light speed. My FTL drive will calm down. Congratulations on your first successful jump. Oh, it won't bloody last. We're counting on you up there. If you encounter another member of Earth's fleet, they should be able to assist you. You say that, I never run into them. The transmission ends and the vastness of space is ready to be explored. So, what happens next is at this point, we've kind of, we're ready to jump. So immediately, what we need to do now is we're not kind of going anywhere. All we want to do is we need to explore this area and then head back to Earth. We're just exploring and then checking back in. And we'll get to why in a second. So at this point, uh, yeah, let's start on this one. This is absolutely fine. So we've set a destination, and now as we speed up time, you can see there that that little bar is basically like our progress bar. While this bloke is piloting the ship, we are actually kind of heading there in that direction. If he decides to walk away, there's the autopilot I could, use, I could turn on to keep us going. But for the most part, what we want to happen is when we arrive, we want people to be at their stations. It's the afternoon shift at the moment. So afternoon shift is in the middle of a working shift, so none of these guys should wander off, hopefully, unless they suddenly need to go to the bathroom or something. And then in a moment, we will be coming out of light speed to our first destination. Let's just slow down time as we approach it. And hopefully nothing's about to go wrong. But if it does, we've got two people on weapons. And oh, blimey. So upon scanning the area, a small vessel can be seen in the distance. Initial power appears to indicate the ship is powered down. Could just avoid it. But let's not do not get into. Okay, in this game, don't get into a fight. And I'll explain why later. Attempt to chat to the ship. And the ship appears to all... Oh, no. Oh, dear. Weapons online. Well, this is a disaster. Okay. Pause for a second. So, just all of a sudden, the ship is in red. We're in battle stations and we're under attack. We have 100 points of hull and a little bit of shield. I've never been sure exactly how much. They have 555 points of hull and 90 shields. But I believe our guns are a little bit better. We basically choose to fire our guns whenever we want. But yeah, a chance to hit 45%. Blimey. Okay, this is what this thing's for. If we start, if things start looking at all dicey, then all we can do is immediately boost the shields. But let's not do that just yet. Instead, fire and fire. Fire both guns at it and see how we do. Can we even hit it? Uh, we've got its shields a bit down at least. Is it firing at us and how hard is it hitting us? Not that hard to be honest. Right, okay, boost shields now. Boost the shields. Oh, why do we not have any shields set up? Just fire everything we've got at it quickly. Blow it the hell up. This will be the first fight I've... Oh, thank God. 
That's the first fight I've ever actually won in this game. Every single other time I've played this game, I died immediately. And I've lost a third of my health. The crew checks the wreckage and certain pieces of the ship appear to be salvageable. We picked up some materials and a little bit of experience. Lovely, and that means a few people level up, like our pilot here. Basically, this is the game that, and I always like it when games do this, actually. This is the game that freely says, by the way, you're terrible. You're, you're new and you're fresh and you're utterly, utterly dreadful. And as a result of that, like, when you run into enemies in your first few sectors, bloody panic. Because you're in a lot, a lot of trouble. Now you, your job is now to fix up this thing. You've leveled up and you are a repair person, so I'm just going to basically put your repair skills up. And you, my pilot, just leveled up, so I'm going to give you a point in piloting. Beautiful. Did either of you actually gain the experience? Not yet, anyway. Fine, everything seems okay for the minute. So with that dealt with, and a little bit of extra materials just to keep us going, may as well head on to the next event. Lovely. Everyone, head on your way, and we're coming to the end of the evening shift. So, if I'm right, when the evening shift is over, when that little white bar fills up, these guys should basically all leave their stations, although this guy's got... What's he doing? What are you doing? Where are you going? Oh, you're heading to the cafeteria because you're hungry. Right, well, let's turn the uh, the autopilot on then so we can continue travelling even when there's no pilot in place. So I think it's a little bit slower. Like, the important thing is n don't arrive in a new set. Why are you just all sitting there, by the way? You're just at the bar. We've just got multiple people just drinking at the bar at the moment. All right, fine, whatever. Multiple people at the bar. I guess it's their free time. It's not their shift. When morning arrives, they will, uh, at that point, they'll do something. What are you doing, by the way? Should you be, like... In, yeah, that's it. You, you be in command. You be in command over there. Perfect. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm actually going to turn the autopilot off. There's no harm in just cruising occasionally. We're just going to come to a full stop and I'm going to wait for the morning shift for the new lads to... Oh no, he's decided he just wants to kind of continue parting anyway. I could technically order him to not be here anymore, but I'm sure we'll be fine. The hull is damaged. I don't think we can even do anything to repair that, by the way. <laughs> I think we're just kind of stuck with we've lost a third of our health. Oh no. A badly damaged station can be seen in the distance. The station appears to be abandoned. The crew may be able to extract some of the data or we could possibly destroy the ship. Don't destroy the station. That might trigger a fight. Just try and recover the data and we've required... Aha! Now this is the important thing because we're not really out here to fight or kill aliens. We're out here for data. That's what we want because remember, this crew is not who we're really playing as. I'm not playing as these guys or this ship or anything. If these guys die and this ship explodes, that's not game over. That doesn't even matter. What matters is, because you can see that, like, back home I've got 10 research points I could spend. And now I've got three research points on this ship. If I get this ship safely back to Earth, those three research points are transferred to me, the sentient AI, the main core AI that's just floating above Earth running everything. At that point, I can invest it into upgrades, and with those upgrades, subsequent expeditions can go further and do more dangerous things and be less ridiculously exposed. If these guys die, it's not game over. If this ship explodes, doesn't matter. I just go back to Earth, back to the original AI, we say, oh well, the little kind of fragment, the copy of my own AI that was out there never made it back. Doesn't matter, it's just data. Let's just send out a new ship and new humans. And it, yeah, it's a complete, it's a very interesting way of doing it. It's a very different way of doing it from what you usually expect. Anyway, the evening shift is over, the morning shift has begun, and that means various people have just checked off their consoles there. And I'm assuming a new crew should actually be arriving in a moment while we're just waiting for them to... I feel stuff. Well then go to the flipping cantina, you lunatics. Go on, go have some lunch. One thing worth noting, by the way, is because I've got a small bathroom, a queue for the bathroom does genuinely develop. So you can see there's someone stuck using the bathroom. And as a result, a small queue has formed there. As the morning crew sets into their job, let's get the next destination on the move because this one's a little bit far away. All I need to do is clear out this area. If I can clear out this area, then we should be in good shape because then we can take these research points back to the big sentient AI glowy eye that rules the entire universe and actually do some upgrading. I've played this for a little bit and I've yet to get a single ship back because it brutally kicks your ass on the first time that you actually play it and I'm not sure whether it's like genius or terrible because if that was intentional then that's kind of genius that it kind of, the game is so brutal at first until you've actually kind of, you know, had a couple of really nervous, tentative first journeys and you've actually done some upgrading, you're terrible at first. Or, possibly, it's not intentional. Possibly the game's just badly balanced. I don't know. It's either genius or terrible, I'm not sure which. 
What I will say is the pathfinding is occasionally highly questionable. For example, like people who you send to do repair tasks will keep repairing a thing long after it's actually, you know, fully repaired, for example, which is a little bit on the unusual side. So that woman will basically at this point just keep, you just, just, I know, I know, quick meal will be great. We'll go and have one then. So that woman there would have basically just kept repairing that console forever. Uh, pretty much. She never would have stopped repairing that console, which is uh, rather unusual. And I believe this guy has now got himself stuck in the bathroom. No, he's officially, he's actually using the shower. He's using the shower. He's, he's not eating his energy and bladder at all terrible. Maybe, maybe if I just kind of tell him to go and eat, I'll be able to reset his positioning. How are you doing? Are you stuck? You're trying to enter the restroom, but you can't. Yep, I'm on it, he says, not going into the bathroom. And we've arrived on a clump of asteroids. Let's move in a bit. Actually, no, let's ignore them. Ignore everything. That I'm not being attacked is good enough. Set the destination. Move on to the fourth and final of this sector. And here we come on the final one. And we've got... Ooh. On initial arrival, there appears to be a comet moving through the sector. However, a visual confirmation, there appears to be plant-like growth on it. Yeah, investigate that. What's going... Ah, perfect. Another four research points. Beautiful. The plant growth of Comet appears to be genetically engineered. So this is aliens. Yeah, we know there's aliens in the universe, by the way. They beat up humanity quite a lot. So add the findings to the ship logs. And we have now got ourselves seven new research points. And that means set destination. Sect cleared. So engage the FTL. At this point, we just move straight back to Earth. Oh, by the way, you can use the jukebox anytime you want to put different music on, but all of it's terrible, so I wouldn't recommend it. There's kind of some nice smooth music there, that's quite, that's alright. But there's some also some terrible dubstep. And there we are, return to Earth, four events, one sector cleared. So with those research points, now that we're back at Earth, because you can only spend research points once you're at Earth with the kind of the big central AI thingy. If we kind of go over here, you can see we've docked. We've docked with the central station where presumably I, the sentient AI, live. And now I can spend these research points in the big research brain. So it kind of works like a little bit of a tree. So for example, in the research brain on weapons side, the first thing I have to do is slightly improve my flat cannon. So we'll do that now. Begin that. So laser weapons, a direct burst of pure energy at the target. Extremely efficient against shields due to narrow blast radius. It is not efficient against enemy hull. And additional research reduces recharge speed and weapon energy costs. So I could give myself some lasers, some extra stuff which could potentially be very, very useful indeed. Or, on the control side, so as a basic starting point, I could spend four research points, for example, on increasing my weapon power max, which could be a very useful thing to do indeed. Alternatively, durable objects. My uh, ship objects uh, break a lot less. Uh, kind of okay, but not spectacular. Galactic communications. Now, this costs a full ten research points, but it gives me interactions. I, I have to fight less, which could be very, very useful indeed. And travel speed, I could slightly increase the speed at which I travel between all sorts of different things. And all the rest of this stuff, I cannot unlock yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm definitely going to unlock laser weapons because I want to unlock the rest of this tech tree. So I'll unlock that. And because laser weapons have now been unlocked. So light power armor, but I can't do that one yet. I'm not quite sure why though. Or... A laser turret, which I'm guessing is one of these turrets up here. So I'm going to research a laser turret. Lovely. That seems like just the sort of thing. And that also unlocks plasma weapons when I do have the... Oh, I could do that now as well. So that could be very, very powerful. Alternatively, I could do... I think the galactic communications thing strikes me as pretty important for more diplomacy. Do more diplomacy. So I have, yeah, upgraded there my brain. And I've spent all my points upgrading my brain. I now have slightly more powerful weapons. I've got to have some new dialogue options. And I should have a nice laser turret I can put on my ship as well. Lovely. You can also, by the way, once you get back into um, the dock here, there's nothing to stop you just kind of building and rebuilding everything. You can just basically change your entire ship around if you want to do that at this point. And you can see there that if I want to, I could now change over my flak cannons to laser turrets. So right now I've got, yes, a laser turret which does... 142, yeah, so there's about 150 shield damage, but only like 75 hull damage, or a flat cannon, which does like, uh, because I've upgraded it once already, actually does a fair bit more. So I'd say probably, ooh, do we? Or maybe do we want one laser cannon just in case we run, yeah, let's have one laser turret just in case we run something with really tough shields. So if we run something with really tough shields, having a laser cannon would be a good idea. It's also worthwhile you're here potentially swapping around any crew that are doing a bad job. So, for example, this guy happened to be completely exhausted from all the work he's done. So, as a result of that, we can just kick him out while we're here. 
So I've got rid of everyone who was struggling previously and brought on some new people instead. Beautiful. So, new crew, upgraded ship, let's head back out again because this sector we've gone into and done quite successfully with and as a result we can go a little bit further out, which I'm guessing means things are a little bit more dangerous in fact. Again, I've no idea what's actually out this way because I've no way of seeing it. I've no idea what those yellow dots are, could be anything. Let's just go there and see what happens. Could be good, could be bad. We're about to, I think we're about to arrive there and uh, no one's actually going to be at any of their stations, but never mind. And we have arrived and straight away a planet that looks distinctly like Earth is in the distance. Well, all right, let's have a little examine of it. And the planet appears to be uncolonized. Future generations should be able to use the planet for settlement. Perfect, three research points straight off the bat. Let's start right here and then we will zip round here. Nice long journey to fix up whatever's gone wrong with the ship on these three and then we can head back, beautiful. And we've arrived, a fast moving comet. Chase after it, I would say, why not? And we have indeed got a strange glow, two research points, perfect. Oh dear, and we've got a confrontation here. We look like we do have a confrontation at this next checkpoint. A small ship barely holding it together, chasing down a weaponless vessel. What if it's a small ship and it's barely holding it together? Then the ship turns its weapons in your direction. Prepare for battle. What's it got? You said it was barely holding it together. It's got a thousand points of hull. But I, on the plus side, have a 65% chance to hit because, fortunately, yes, oh, but it's not got much in the way of shields. That's a shame because obviously I've got one laser turret. Oh, well. Fire the laser turret first, 65% chance to hit, and then immediately follow it up with our flak cannon. Prepare to... Why is the... Oh, dear. We may have a small problem. Apparently, we've got a problem with our energy tank that powers our weapons. I'm really hoping we can still fire our weapons. Otherwise, I'm going to feel very bad about the whole we picked a fight with these guys. Fire the laser cannon and hope for a hit. And we did indeed get a hit. Fire the flat cannon. Fire everything, in fact. Just keep firing as fast as we can. We're doing a decent job. We'd, so far, he has not got through our shields. Fire as fast as we can. The energy... Oh, darn. With no energy tank, we're not going to be able to fire much longer. Keep firing at it. 192. Fire that. I'm not sure where you actually can see your flipping... Uh... Oh, wait. He's only got laser weapons himself. If he's only got laser weapons, we'll tear him apart. Yes, fire the laser cannon, which should be more accurate. Oh, tiny bit of hull damage. Keep on firing. Fire everything. Oh, no. I think we're running out of... Oh, thank goodness. Okay, good. Oh, we got a final shot in it. What a bastard. So after checking the wreckage of the ship, the weaponless vessel jets and several supplies and blueprints. Oh, that's nice of them. Gives us some supplies. I don't know what supplies do, by the way. On one of my test runs, I actually got down to zero supplies and people kept eating and stuff. It seems to be absolutely fine. <laughs> um, so yes, that's interesting. Whatever. Uh, obtain the supplies and research left behind. Uh, yes, so we get three research and 25 hit points. So I'd say a couple of people will probably level up after that. Oh, that's what these bars down here mean. I completely bloody missed that. Obviously, these bars indicate what level the shield is at and how much power is left in the weapons. Got it. The pathfinding desperately needs some work in this game because I have seen on multiple occasions people just get stuck in a little queue outside of the bathroom and once they're in that queue it's very hard to separate them out again they kind of get a little bit on the stuck side. So you, okay, what if you're hungry just go and get some food, goodness sake. In particular if they need the bathroom they sometimes get stuck in the queue for the bathroom and then basically just get stuck there forever. That table just broke, maybe go fix that. Yeah, sometimes they get stuck there forever and as a result of not being able to um, use up the bladder thing they get stuck and not eating which slows them down quite a lot which can be a bit of a big problem. Anyway, on the plus side, at least we've got plenty of weapon and uh, shield energy ahead of arriving at our next spot. Perfect. My stomach's rumbling. Well, I don't care. Just bloody crack on with it. We're probably going to all die in a second. And we've got another ship present. Okay, attempt to save the defense of the ship. Sure, in for a penny, in for a pound. Ship turns its weapons in my direction. Pause. Oh, this one looks actually more flimsy than the last one we took out, so that's fine. Uh, weapons only 50. This time, our weapons tank is actually operational. So... Begin, fire the lasers. Uh, no, I said fire the lasers. Oh, never mind. Uh, yeah, fire the lasers in. That's absolutely fine. You see there, our weapon tank is actually filling up nice and fast, which means we should be able to fire as soon as we can. We've got double weapons. I think he's only got one. We should be able to actually cut through him pretty quickly. Activate the boost shields. Yep, activate. Okay, so we've just given ourselves another 100 shields in the tank there. And as soon as he shoots us, you'll see that bar down there go down. And in a second, yep, the shields are half down already. And we need you to top those up as soon as possible, please. Ideally, we just need to... Basically, we need to kill people before our shields go down. And keep firing. Oh, the weapon energy is very, very low. 
And we managed to take him out. Beautiful. Another four research points. Okay. So it's mainly all about... And everyone gets level up, including people who are just standing in the cafeteria doing nothing. Well done, you. So obviously we want your targeting to go up. You, I think, were commanding at the time. So your yeah, consoles can go up. And you, you are apparently piloting. Okay, now this is productive. But now we need to go to the other side of the galaxy. And that's going to take us a while. I think I've actually also partly made my life a bit harder because I have such a small cafeteria, there's only one table and thus only two people can actually eat at any one time in this place because people can't eat standing up. They've actually got to sit down to be allowed to eat, which I think is causing a few problems. You are supposed to be the captain. Just go and sit in the seat. Do you not like the seat? Is that uncomfortable for your back? Also, let's have some different music on. I'm going to show you some of the terrible, terrible music. This is the music in the future. I hate the future. This is why no one wants to live on Earth anymore. And almost at the next destination, we've got people at all of the consoles. This is all looking pretty good to me, I think. And after we reach this next destination, there should be another destination pretty much immediately very, very close by. And we have got... Ooh, faint sounds can be heard from what appears to be a disabled vessel off in the distance. The ship appears to have a great deal of structural damage. Uh, aim weapons at the wreckage and begin hailing. Attack the ship. Yes, aim weapons and begin hailing. And the ship is not wreckage. Its systems all seem to turn on at once. Oh dear again. Right, what are we looking at here? Um, Tough, but not much tougher than what we've already been facing, to be honest. Though, oh no. Um, Could one of you who is actually like, you know, uh, something or another actually go and potentially fix the fact that apparently our weapon energy tank is broken? Because that's going to cause us some trouble. Right, fire the lasers. Yep, and then follow up by firing at the main, yep, fire the main flat gun once the lasers are down. How much damage are you going to do to our shields? Uh, not much, actually. Just keep firing at you, I would say. Just fire the flat, fire everything as fast as we can. Prioritize saving energy for the, actually save all energy for the flat gun. 63% chance to hit. I'm guessing that was a miss. Our shields are almost down. You, I need you to repair this thing. Like, yeah, now, please. Please repair this. And then, oh, activate bonus, yeah, boost shields. A bonus to the shields, that's fine. And then just keep firing the main flat gun at him. He's at half health. We're pretty damaged too, to be honest. Oh, our weapon energy is really low. Our weapon energy is so low. You stop, would you please go and repair that? Because we are in a lot of trouble. We just need to finish him off. Oh, he's going to start doing actual damage to us in a second. Ouch. Yes, he is. He's doing actual damage to us. Just please hit him. That last shot should be enough to finish him off if it hits. Anything will kill him. Just hit him. Shoot him with something. Anything will do. Just... Oh, oh, yes. Bo boost shields. Boost shields. Boost shields. Lovely. And then anything... Oh, no. We're out of weapon energy. Weapon fixed. Fix the tank. Oh, thank God. Okay, we're, we're almost out of... We're at hull 7 out of 100. We got a tiny bit of research there and some XP as well. Everyone's improving. Good. And just one more to go to in this particular sector. Right, final event coming up on us. What's it going to be? It appears to be a giant space squid. I would say probably a scout ship can be seen activating its weapons. Oh, no. No, no, no. We've got nothing. We've got nothing. Attempts to flee. Oh, a battle is inevitable. Oh, dear. Oh dear, right, okay. Oh, hang on. This could work to our advantage. Actually, you know what? It's actually not got much in the way of... Yeah, it's not got much in the way of, um, of health. If we could use our laser to get its shields down, we could actually potentially tether it pretty quickly, but oh no. We've only got seven points of hull health and we're only at half shields. Boost. Boost the shield up as fast as possible. You, get back over there and fix that. You... Do the same, actually. Both of you try and fix that. And in the meantime, uh, fire the laser. Fire laser at it. Hopefully that will hit its shield. Oh, its shield's half down. Fire laser again. Yeah, prepare to boost. We need to get that. We need to get the shield boost up as fast as possible. Shields are down, effectively. Um, our shields remain up, at least for the moment. Fire flat cannons at it as often as possible. That's our only chance. Lasers as well. Why not? Just keep going. Oh, we might actually just be able to win this. Just, just boost shields just a tiny bit more. Everything, everything on the shields and the flat cannon. We've, oh no, it's only a 53% chance to hit. That's, it's not as easy as I was hoping it might be. Just nothing but the flat cannon. We need to just hit it with the flat cannon because that's, yes! Okay, one more, one more, one more, one more. Boost the shields again. We just can't, go, oh, thank God. 
Oh, okay, good. Point of research, 25 XP, everyone levels up. Everyone is happy and we can FTL back to Earth. Lovely. And with all these lovely research points, we can unlock some plasma weapons. And that unlocks the plasma turret. Beautiful. So basically extremely efficient against enemy shields. So basically an improved laser turret. Perfect. Ah, and meanwhile, I've now started unlocking extra rooms that I could have instead. So now I could have a medical bay in order to, yes, if people are injured, we can heal them up. Alternatively, a briefing room, which again is not available just yet. I think it's because uh, one of these nodes is like actually a larger ship. So you've actually got a larger ship frame to build into, which is why I can't have these yet. And I'm guessing that's why power armor, light power armor, medium power armor disabled is because I need like an armory or something in order to actually put it on. But the briefing room would increase my efficiency on mission. So again, if you want to avoid combat and do things diplomatically, then have galactic communications, have a briefing room, have things like that. Okay, I see. And indeed, having upgraded the scout ship again, I've now unlocked long range scanners. So in other words, additional research will reveal more in-depth information for all found nodes so I can actually see what's going to be ahead of me a lot better. So that one's pretty powerful. And evasive maneuvers. So additional research provides a greater percentage of evasion. So now I can order my pilot to just dodge the hell out of the way. That's pretty cool as well. So I'm guessing that's one of the things. Ah, yes. That's one of the things up here. So I can ultimately have up to four turrets at once and evasive maneuvers and a combat scanner. All right, very, very cool indeed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think you see how this all works. What this is, is a very good idea, still in an early form and in need of a whole lot of polishing. The big thing that needs work is um, the AI pathing. So you can see there that we've got someone who desperately needs the toilets and a bathroom that is completely empty, but man cannot use bathroom. I really have to go to the bathroom. I know, I'm trying to tell you to go there. Maybe if I tell you to leave and then go back in the room... But nope, he just he just cannot use the bathroom for whatever reason. Yeah, people seem to get stuck in bathrooms an awful, awful lot. Uh, pathing seems to be a little bit dubious in general. Um, engineers, when they're trying to repair something, will just kind of keep repairing it forever, which is a little bit kind of, uh, which is obviously far from perfect. People also seem to randomly go to places that don't make any sense. For example, like this bloke up here, who's sitting at a broken weapons console. It's currently the morning, and that means his routine says that he's supposed to be on shields, but he's not. He's instead decided to just sit at a broken weapons console. So people just seem to struggle with following their own schedules. There's a couple of things that just need a lot of work here. I think it's a really interesting idea. I didn't quite get it at first, because like I found it very frustrating. That I, like In the first few areas, you tend to die in combat quite a lot. You take a lot of damage. You have to kind of retreat back to Earth for repairs a lot. But I guess it's kind of more just like the idea of humans suck. We're new to the galaxy. Everything we run into will murder us. The only way that you can possibly win is by going on a couple of like very small, cautious scouting missions, bringing back the research you find and desperately upgrading yourselves so that next time you can go and kick a lot more ass with plasma turrets and upgraded turrets in general and evasion and more weapons and ultimately bigger ships with more rooms. So I'm not sure where the uh, where the option to unlock the bigger ship is, but I'm going to guess it's somewhere in the research deck here. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what state this game is in. I think it's in early access. In fact, I would assume it's in uh, in early access, but I, I'm genuinely not quite sure. I'll put a link into it in the description below. It might be one to watch if you're interested in kind of watching a game develop and this sort of thing appeals to you, but you're fully aware that potentially it's still a work in progress and will need a lot more work yet. But it's an interesting one and might be an interesting one to watch. Like, I can't earnestly, like, recommend it for everyone. I think you'd need to be, one, into this sort of thing, and two, go into it fully aware that it is a game that is still going to need a lot of work and optimization yet. But if you like watching that sort of thing, or this sort of thing is just your bag, you might well like this anyway. So, more of this sort of thing soon. I can never resist a space-based roguelike, as you're very, very aware. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been The Sentient. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Don't mind me, I'm practicing my stabbing motion. It's fine. Oh, you shouldn't have got in the way. You must die. You showed up to a party and you brought a guitar. I despise you. There's two people who are just having sex in this corridor. They're going to go down. Stab, stab. There we are. Like Romeo and Juliet, but sped up slightly. It's the it's kind of the footnotes version.